Welcome to the EEG Reading Grounds. I'll start with Chapter 5 of the Web-Based EEG Atlas today. Let's start with the first slide. When you look at an EEG, it's important first determine what's the state of this patient. So we see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm here in O2, which is right occipital, and O1, left occipital. There is an asymmetry in the amplitude between the right side and the left side. If the amplitude difference is more than 50% and that is persistent throughout the record, you can consider the side with the lower amplitude as abnormal. Let's review this EEG. So what do you think? So the most striking abnormality here is at P4, O2 and T6 in the right posterior temporal occipital head region you see these focal sharp waves. So these areas have maximal negativity at O2. So you can say that these are epileptiform discharges with this person having an increased risk of seizure onset from the right posterior temporal or occipital head regions. What do you think about this particular recording? compare the left hemisphere so all the odd numbers are on the left and the even numbers do you see a difference so the most striking abnormality is asymmetric slowing in the left hemisphere let's count these waveforms so you have one two and three waves so these are delta waves and this wave has a different morphology than this wave so you do not see the similar morphology between each wave. So this is polymorphic because the morphology is changing. So you see asymmetric polymorphic delta activity in the left temporal head region. Now you can add that this delta activity is also mixed with some theta frequencies and some faster frequencies. So another way to report this would be a mixture of asymmetric polymorphic delta and theta activity in the left hemisphere with superimposed beta frequencies. The question is what conditions will give you this kind of an abnormality? You can think of structural abnormalities such as a brain tumor, a stroke, an abscess, a traumatic injury with some blood accumulation or you can also think of a postictal state so someone who's had a seizure from the left hemisphere may now demonstrate asymmetric slowing there since this is just the 10 or 12 seconds of the EEG this could be a beginning of a seizure which evolves into higher amplitudes and frequencies accounting for an electrographic seizure what about here when you look at an EEG so first determine the state you see sleep spindles here so when you see sleep spindles this tells you that this is a stage 2 sleep and then try to identify the findings and the first question is is this a normal physiological waveform or is this pathological so as you would have learned from the previous lectures these are posts so positive occipital sharp transients which is a normal variant so you do not call this abnormal okay so we've covered these four slides we'll move on to the next slide okay let's have a look here so when you look at these EGs first take a piece of paper try to write down your own impression as we go along so I can then review these findings so these dark green lines are separated by one second the most striking feature here is this rhythmic activity which evolves in frequency and amplitude so look at the amplitudes here and look at the increase in amplitude here so you're seeing an evolution in frequency and amplitude which is which starts from C4 which is right central region right central region and then evolves and spreads to CZ it goes to T4 so you can see the nice electrical field this is an electrographic seizure starting from the left 
excuse me, starting from the right central head region. The question is, what kind of clinical findings uh, do you expect to see in this patient? So if there is an electrographic seizure with onset from the right central head region, you may expect to see some focal twitching of the left side of the face or the left hand. What about here? So you see sharp waves in T4, so these sharp waves, this is common, T4 is common between these two channels, so you see sharp waves in T4 and T3. This patient is a 14 year old who was diagnosed with benign epilepsy of childhood with Rolandic spikes. What about here? Striking findings, so you see some alpha rhythm here on the left hemisphere but you do not see it on the right hemisphere. So the way you'll describe is describe the CG is that there is an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. Whenever you see an asymmetry on the EG, try to define and describe in detail what you find on each hemisphere. So the most striking finding on the right hemisphere is delta activity, so polymorphic delta activity with sharp waves that are there at the same time and you do not see the alpha that you see in the occipital head region O1 you do not see a similar alpha frequency or alpha rhythm on the right hemisphere so these findings are suggestive of a structural abnormality in the right hemisphere with an increased risk of seizure onset from this location let's move on and what do you see here so think about the first slide that I showed you with an electrographic seizure coming from C4 which showed an evolution in frequency and amplitude. As opposed to that slide you see that there is rhythmic theta activity so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which does not evolve a whole lot so this is a monomorphic theta activity with maximal amplitudes at T3 which is mid-temporal and this person is most likely asleep you do not see uh, I blink artifacts here you do not see a whole lot of uh, muscle artifact so basically you're looking at rhythmic mid temporal theta activity during the drowsy period so this is considered a benign EEG variant this does not have an association with epilepsy it is also known as psychomotor variant so let's move on to the next slide here So the state of this patient, this patient has, this patient is in stage 2 sleep. You see sleep spindles, so these frequencies here, somewhat morphology resembling mu, this is sleep spindles, these are asynchronous. So these do not occur at, in the left and the right hemisphere simultaneously. Sleep spindles first appear at 6 to 8 weeks post gestation these do not become synchronous until 18 months of age if someone has a sleep spindle that is asynchronous before two years of age it is still not considered abnormal what I'll do is I'll stop here since I have quite a few slides and we can cover focal abnormalities in one of the future lectures so I hope you enjoyed the talk and I'll talk I'll see you later thank you